Okay, so I haven't actually watched a single one of Matt's project videos, if I'm perfectly honest. So this is literally me starting from scratch. I'm gonna open up his website for, I guess it's what, mattesley.com forward slash school. Yeah. Look at that. That was easy. <laughs> okay, I spelled it wrong. That's why the site can't be reached. <laughs> Massley.com for slash school and scroll down. Ah, uh, I don't need the basics, do I? I'm awesome. Don't need material prep because certain someone's already done that. Tools. Nah, I know what they are. You just saw on a screwdriver. Maybe a hammer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Dovetail box. Enter. Oh, I need the plans. Get plans. Okay, dovetail box. <sighs> Are you gonna make me buy these? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and to, you haven't changed the button yet. No, I haven't. Just, just ha have a look when you add it to cart. Just think about what that that button Although represents. Although I can give you a discount that I gave to patrons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm viewing my cart. Enter promo code. Apply. So there's a hint. If you uh, want to get a really good discount of hundred percent on this particular plan. Become a patron. Become a patron. Download. Even your little download section has an awful <laughs> green square around it. It's the same colour as. No, it's green as in like money. Buy. <laughs> <laughs> it's bought. It's it like looks like liminal messaging. It's already bought. Oh. Right, dovetail plans. Lovely. Ooh, cutting list. I don't need that, I suppose. No. That's what this is, okay. Oh, official ways. Dovetailplans.png. Ooh, look, look at that. Right, that's easy to understand. So this is all in uh, inches, yeah? Yes, yes, that is all in inches. Yep, cool. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a rather large box, but I'll see what I can make of it with these. Yeah. Okay, okay, so there's that. And, and what was this? Other? Oh, that's SketchUp. SketchUp. Let's see what happens. No, I don't actually. Start modeling. I agree, let's get going. Oh, it's a woman. Delete. Drag a model anywhere on the screen or click browse. <gasps> oh, there we go. Cool. Save changes to the current model. No. Awesome. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's yeah, a, it works then. <laughs> that's a box. It is. Okay, so that's what I'm making. Uh, free resources. These resources are available to help you prepare for the course and get through the course. You will get tool recommendations. I think I might need that. Oh. Yeah, you've got to buy your own torch, you're not using mine. <laughs> right, off to home base I go. <laughs> home base. So I will need saws, planes. Wait, is this just a... Oh, I thought this was specific to the project, Matt. It is. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. What do you mean? I don't remember needing a router table. A router table? Router, router table. table. Router table, I then. Need a router table. Oh, it does say dovetail box. Yeah. But it's everything you need. A router table. Hmm. Oh, damn. There is some routering, isn't there? Oh. The lid. Oh. But, because it's red, it means you've got a choice between the router table or, or sorry, should I say the router table, or a shoulder plane or a rabbit plane. Because if you look up here, mm -hmm. the key, yeah. the tools highlighted in red are where you have a choice between the various options. So you uh, only need one of those red ones. See, that's, Go that's good to know. I wish you'd said that earlier on in the document. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I should have made that clearer. Blue ones are optional tools, and green ones are stuff that you will need. Okay, cool. Well, I, I thought I'd be nice and prepared and get everything laid out with exactly what I need, but seeing as the list is quite large, I won't be doing that. No, you, don't, you won't need it all now. No. Dimensioning material. You definitely won't need the roof table. I'm a quick learner. Hmm. Uh, dimensioning material, I don't need that, I assume, because this is dimensioned. Oh no. No, you need that. Ah, oh, I've got to cut something now. Yeah, hey, you've, got, you've got to do something. Okay. In fact, I'm going to get myself a notebook, just in case. Right. Shut up! Why can't I say it like that? Is there anything wrong with me saying it like this that? It's a router. 
at a table. In this lesson, I will show you how to cut and shoot material to size as well as share a footprint we have to work out on your box. I keep forgetting that I actually need to learn this. Yeah. Like this isn't just this isn't just me. Oh, I'm just scrolling through this, pretending to do my work. So no, I've got to focus. <laughs> You're right there, trying to learn. So the supporting material is for uh, how to saw correctly, uh, how to make a simple shooting board, how to make a ramp shooting board. So, you've already got a simple shooting board. I've got a ramp shooting board, yeah. And, and that one. Will I be using both? You will be using both. Cool, so that's the simple one. That is, that's your bench hook. Now that is, uh, well you will need that because that is for cutting the material across. You'll, you'll see in the video why that's useful. Okay, I'll put that over there. Yeah, the shooting board. You won't need that just yet. I'm not good. Well, you I was need to cut it to size first, unless you want to get it all out of the bench. Well, I sort of. Uh, I mean, the ramp shooting boards. I I won't be getting out at the moment because it's so big. But where, where's the other one? Where's the what? simple shooting board? Oh no, that's just um, that's just something that you bodge together if you don't have all the resources to make a ramp. Board. Oh okay. Oh. I mean, you can see it in that video. It's just. I could have also read just the bit underneath it that said, if you don't have the resources to make a fully fledged shooting board, you can make a simple one. It's all yeah. there. It is all there. This is an ode as to why you need to use the website for this series. Ah, <sighs> it is, and why it's you need to read there. it. Hey? And why you need to read it, mm. as opposed to just skimming over it like I was hoping to. Sizing material. Hello oh. everybody, and 15 minutes. Mm. Cutting material to size. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Yep. I think I might need some power for this Mac. Yeah. Because it's going to be on for a while, I believe. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> 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 Hello everybody and welcome back to Turning Tuesday. Oh, this workshop isn't big enough for the both of us. A beginner it only made sense that I didn't have to do any talking over the top while I struggled through this part so you've got a voiceover. So after doing some measuring and squaring I decided to watch Matt's soaring tutorial. You can see here I've just got to the introduction. It's super loud. How did he ever edit it like that? Crazy. Anyways while I watched it, I actually enacted the exact movements that he was doing so I could feel the weight of the saw and try and understand the points that he was putting across. It was really helpful. And painful. So after a bit more practicing, 15 minutes later, I was ready to get the first cut going. Slowly but surely, Yeah, I'm really lining it up. I really want to get it right. Come on, Rob, you can do it. Here we go. Ready. Got to get those feet right. A little bit of a dance. Here he goes. Come on. Yeah, look at that. Cut number one. After however many years of no woodwork, so this video is a little bit of a longer one, but I was asking so many questions because I'm a complete novice. But with any luck, it's gonna help you on your woodworking journey too. What is the importance of getting that end completely straight when you're just removing that rough stuff? 
Uh, main thing is when you get a rough sawn board, yeah. they sometimes paint the ends. Oh, I see. So if you happen to have an end with paint on it, that is going to soak in about five millimeters. So I didn't need to do that. Accident. Probably not with that, but it's good practice. It is because it wasn't complete. I, 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 to be honest, it was straight and I expected. But I went off by that's about half a mil. No, that's all you need though, really. Yeah? That's, yeah, I mean, you're going to shoot it down anyway later on, so... Yeah, I found it quite difficult to actually get that first that's, action going. That's difficult. Try the Japanese saw, if you want. Try the Japanese one? Okay, yeah. I'll do that on the, on the next thing. Yeah. All right? Cool. Thank you. Might be a stupid question, mm -hmm. but I've marked out a line. Yeah. I know that I want to cut on the side where all the waste is. Yes. That makes sense. But in this case, if I'm going to cut it and try the Japanese saw, yeah. I can't see the line as I'm going across. Like, how can I be confident that I'm cutting it straight in that regard? Is, is it the thing where you said in that video where you're sort of looking either side of the saw at the same mm -hmm. time? So like, when you're looking both sides of the saw, it's really, it plays tricks on your eyes because you see, you see double and it's difficult to know where your eye is actually looking and where the saw actually is. With that technique of looking over the spine, yeah. what I would do is do that while you're actually sawing, but when you're starting the cut, yeah. what I tend to do is I, so I'll start it like on the line and actually lean over and look oh, at onto this the other side. side, yeah. Yeah, so then I'll work the line back. Once it's locked in at the top, that's where I swap my vision because then the saw can't shift. And yeah. like, even if you don't trust your eyes, at least the saw's in the right position. Yeah, so is that the way you would stand if yes. you were going to saw that right now? At the that, side. That's the exact, exact yeah, at the side, yeah. you, you sort of side onto it. Yeah, so, so wrist, elbow, and this is all in line. And do you do that weird thing with your feet every time? Uh, I. We'll do all sorts of things. <laughs> do that. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like the main thing is. It just allowing... felt really weird being side on. I, it it's... feels really weird. It's it's like I'm do I'm going in a straight line, therefore I should be in a straight line. But it made loads of sense when you said everything should be. I mean, think of it how you're playing pool. If you're doing pool, you stand at the side and you let everything That's or it. snooker. Should I say? That's a really good point. You put it all in line. It's that kind of thing. I mean, you might be doing it with the other hand, perhaps. Um, but it's that. But it's that same concept. If you stand at the front, you're, you've got a like, I mean, you can see the saw plate twisted. Yeah. Whereas if you do that, it's like a, one of those trains. Yeah. But obviously it's, a, it's, well, it's not obvious, but it's a lot clearer, that issue, with a Japanese saw because the handle is so long. Yeah. When you're using a saw which has literally got that pistol grip, as you said, like, you, you could almost think, oh, this feels fine. Mm. But as soon as you've got this, and I think, how come I didn't realise that beforehand? Yeah, yeah, it is weird. It's like a massive extension on it. A lot easier to get this cut started, which is what most people struggle on. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people do neglect the positioning of their body. Yeah. And that really helps to get or to cut straight. I can imagine. Right. All right. I guess uh, I've got to try and actually cut one thing. Yes. So far, I've only done an end grain, which <laughs> I apparently done, didn't need to do. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I'm so scared. <laughs> My Paduk. My African Paduk. <laughs> alright? Yep, no, that's fine. Stay there. <laughs> what you do? Struggling! I'm struggling! In your sawing video, yeah. um, 
I mean, you've mentioned to me that it's it's more about when you're you're sawing stuff down, like like uh, dovetail joints and that sort of stuff yeah. as well. Ripping. That's what it's called. Oh, okay. Ripping and you're doing cross cutting at the moment. Right, because ripping is going with the grain. With the grain. Yeah. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Um, in that one, you were talking about having your thumb in the way. Yes. I tried practicing with that actually, and yeah. my thumb's got a nail on it, but it's slightly longer than yours. That's mm -hmm. Like, would you use the nail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. most people use the nail. Um, I just imagine the skin just gives you just a little bit more control. But that's beside the point. Yeah. Uh, the whole thing is that I suppose because you've got this here, yes. you're not, you're not, you don't need to care about any of that. Um, or, or do you still put your thumb up there? I do, but I guess you could use that. How, how, how do you then hold? That's it. What like that? Because you're using this saw, yeah. it's cutting on the push stroke, so it's pushing it into that fence. Yeah. That isn't ideal for this because it is pulling it away from the fence. That might be why I kept on like doing that because because be I wasn't. So, if that yeah. is happening, reduce the pressure with that. Yeah. So that it's not digging in as much and just try and let it glide through. But yeah, realistically, these are made for push saws. Okay. Japanese saws, obviously, that fence would be here, so that you can pull into it and prop. Well, actually, you could just hook that over here. So wait, so does... This cuts on the pot. Uh, it goes the opposite way, doesn't it? Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. So there's me doing the same movement. You're trying to... Oh. It took me a long time to cut with this one. Yeah. And probably hence why I had the same issues on that. Maybe. On yeah, the they cut the pull stroke. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yes. Okay, cool. Because then uh, after that fatal error, which led to that yes. stuff there, I, I recut the end just for the sake of it yep. as well. Um, and I was quite pleased. Oh, yeah. Went straight across. I had a little bit of an issue there, but it is when you actually Mine. get to the stuff underneath, yeah. it's, it's flat. Yeah, that's spot on, isn't it? But yeah, that, that was that yeah, bad boy. Give that a go, but hook this over there. And, and do the opposite thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe give that a go. So the next cut I'm doing with the Japanese saw. Okay. I need that, I don't mind. Wait, what? That's it. Yeah? Oh, yeah, the basket down the road. Oh, wait, flip it over. Ah, oh, I did visual. Look go. at that. Okay. So. You draw it back and that does the cut. Yes. Right. That changes everything. When using, uh, what, what do you call this? Shooting, it's not a shooting ball, is Bench it? Bench hook. Bench hook. Yep. When using this, particularly mm -hmm. in this situation where I've got the rest closer to me, yep. would you more likely, or like, like, do you have a preference on what side you start, whether it's on the back edge or the front edge? I always start on the back. Always start. Yeah, that's my preference. I know people who start on the front and then angle yeah. it forwards. I angle it on the back just because it's what I was taught. That's fair. So whatever I will you find more. Be you. Copy me. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it would be silly to do the front and then arrive at issues that you wouldn't have yeah. because you got the back. Due to your rebellious nature. Yes, I'm a rebellious boy. <laughs> Don't you laugh? And a bigger boy. And a well, not currently. Not currently. <laughs> A certain server's still running. Oh. So that, I mean, it wasn't a, a horrific first cut, but, oh, that's what I should have done. What's that? Well, I was gonna say, I've got nothing to lean against. I'm just on my own over here, mm -hmm. if I'm starting from the back, but then I should have just done that. Yeah, put it up against that. And then that would have given me enough to just still rest against it. Mm -hmm. So that's where I went wrong. And then when I feel like I'm asking these really basic questions, it's no, yeah. just really stupid. So, so on, I, I mean, I, I started to do it. Like I felt like it was right, but I don't know if it was. Yeah. I would push forward. Yeah. And it would have a weight to it. I wouldn't yeah. be pushing hard, just a weight to it. Mm -hmm. On the pullback, no weight. No weight. Yeah. So it's just the opposite here. On the push forwards, bit of weight. On the pull back, 
No. No. Yeah, push forwards, no weight. There's no, you yes. Feel, feel a resistance when you pull it back. Yeah, but but as in, I know I'm going to feel that naturally because of these teeth, but do yeah. you change how much weight you're putting in depending on what direction you're going? Not really. You shouldn't put a lot of weight on the saw anyway. The weight of it, just the weight of that, yeah. should be enough Is to enough. pull it through. Yeah, it should be, especially with one like that. This may be a bit more, but like you should be able to hold it loose and just... Oh, no, I see. Okay. Yeah, okay. Need to put too much pressure on it at all. Forwards is not cutting. No. Okay. And instead of grabbing that. Maybe just sort of put your pressure on top of the workpiece and just pull it back towards you. So what am So just sort of like that. Or just that. Yeah. Okay. What was I doing? That. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then I guess you, you can use your thumb there. You can use your thumb. Okay. And how far up the handle should I be holding it? Wherever you feel comfortable. About there is where I have it. Okay. I'm going over here then. I'm a mobile. <laughs> Close. Sorry, sorry, board. That's made to be cut into. Good. It's not bad, but it could have been better. So, to sort of reiterate along the lines of having your thumb in place, mm -hmm. that made sense when the when the Oh, I've got to think about what this is. I can't do it. What is it? Bench hook. Bench hook. I was never going to get that. Um, so it made sense when the bench hook was wrapped over that side and I was using the Japanese saw. Yeah. This way around, is it, is it, would, would you do that? Would you bother? Um, let me think. Oh, I, do. I might do. Yeah. It's not really doing a lot. Like I push it into the bench hook with that. Yeah. Grab it at the back and then, yeah, when I was starting off, I would definitely have my thumb there, I reckon. Oh, okay, yeah. I'd do something like that. But but would you would you be, would you have your thumb there while you're like right on that edge as well? Is that what you're doing? Uh, no. Because obviously when you just did that, you were I actually not using it. wouldn't have it resting on that edge, to be honest. I would just have my thumb there and keep it clear. Oh, so you don't actually use, do you use the edge for any well, of the cutting? You can do. Um, some people make the fence and then they put a 90 degree cut through it. Yeah. You know, like those mite boxes you can buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that. Um, I just don't tend to do that. So this, this is actually literally just for support? Yep. Pretty much, yeah. Oh. You can use it for whatever you want. If you find it easier to put the saw up against it, by all means do it. You might start chopping into the end, which doesn't matter. But yeah, yeah like, doesn't, okay. doesn't matter. <laughs> that, that makes more sense for being able to do that because like when it's, over here and you're on your on your on the line yeah it's probably not a lot of point is there yeah yeah i guess that's sort of doing the job for you assuming mm -hmm. that, like i assume you cut that so it's absolutely straight but, but i'd like then to think you, so but then it doesn't matter to you no not at all so not then you yeah like i say most of the stuff with the thumb it's it's just to get you started it's not really to like i think most of the time i put it there as security rather than actually guiding the saw. Like if yeah. it was to jump out, at least that sort of acts as a bumper and it stops me from landing on the material here. Yeah. I think that's pretty much all I use it for subliminally, but. Especially on a larger, wider piece of wood like this. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like I said, most of the stuff in that sawing video is applicable to when you're ripping with the grain. When you cross cut in, it's useful to know, but It'll be when we're cutting the actual tails out later where most of that comes into play. Yeah, when most of those tips come into play. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. No worries. No worries.
fun shooting that stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just a, well, one, I'm just assuming I'm doing it correctly based on your video, but two, I'm trying to, hopefully, it's just that one knob that I have to control. To do what? To take the blade out a little bit. Shouldn't need to take the blade out. I thought you would have had it on zero. It said to have it on zero to begin with and then slam Oh, it. yeah. Yeah, sorry, it is that. Yeah, start on zero and then bring it out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're doing it properly, you'd watch a video on how to set up a plane first, but you know. I didn't know you had that because it wasn't linked and you didn't say it in the video. Oh, is it not in the resources? Oh. It, to be honest, it might have been. But. Uh, probably wasn't actually. Might not put that in there. How to talk correctly, how to make a simple shooting board, how to make a ramp shooting board. No. Okay. So you know what you need to add in there then? Well, I thought. That's going alright. Yeah, no, no, things are, things are happening. I don't really understand when. Like, like when, when are you happy that that's square? Obviously, you're only going to get it square. You're not aiming to actually reduce the size until that square, and then you do the other end. Yeah. But like, at what point do you, like, when you check it with the square? Oh. <laughs> so that one should be okay as it is. Is it? Is it all right? Yeah, but why would you say that? Uh, because that's. That would be thrown out by the tilt of the plane, which I've locked down. So the main one would be across the sideways, across the long length of it. Well, that uh, so across it, that's it. Hold that to the light. Oh yes. Well, look good. Well, technically, there's like the tiniest gap along the whole thing, apart from one little tiny bit. Where's that little tiny bit? Just there. Is it a bit of crap on the square? Could be. No, still there. Yeah. I think. It looks like it must be where you're coming out the cut. You can see there's some sort of like weird. Okay. Thing going on there. So when so this is going. I assume. You want to make sure that you're already on the plate yeah. before you go anywhere, and yeah. then it's just a straight through. Forward pressure, yeah. And, and, and a little bit of pressure to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. So I'll keep it on that. That was probably the back bit. I had it, yeah, yeah, that. Thudum. Yeah. I didn't see which way up I was doing it. I just assume uh, you put you it down. It on the face edge. Which was correct. That marking you've got on that, yeah, which is fine. Okay. Yeah, tiny little bit. I mean, that will be okay. Yeah. But you don't just want okay. No. Ooh. Ooh. I assume, like, it's okay to see light as long as it's even across the board or would you want to get rid of because I, I can definitely still see light but it's like even everywhere right it would just be touching on that fluff there stopping it that's fine all you had was a bit of fluff poking yeah. up on the edge and that was resting yeah, that's spot on there. Yeah? Yep. That is fine. Okay, so like... You see that cut out in the square? Yeah. You take it away. You've got that sort of bit there. That's yeah, for yeah. all the fluff to fall in so it doesn't throw it out. Okay. Okay. So like, obviously, when you did it, I assume you saw that there was still light. Yes, there was. Yeah. And that always happen? Um... Yeah, well, there was a tiny bit, isn't it? Oh, yeah, bit. yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's obviously it's not like yeah. a chunk. No, that'll be fine. What you got there? Be fine. Don't like that'll be fine. <laughs> Suppose it's uh, like the squares are a bit old. They'll have bits of rust on them, which will be holding mm. it up from the surface. Mm. That's quite a porous wood, so it's going to be holding it up a bit. Whereas yeah. if it was like marble on marble, perfectly but, flat, then yeah. there won't be any light. Okay. That's because there's a bit of fluffiness and a bit of rust introduced. 
Okay, I'll trust your shoddy materials and not my shoddy workmanship. Yes. So, Rob has completed part one. He's got the material cut to size. He's marked his face sides and face edges and numbered the components. How did you find it? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I hated every moment. No, no, it was eye-opening is what yeah. it was. Because every time I've seen Matt do stuff, I've just assumed, well, if he can do it, it must be stupidly easy. Um, yeah, same yeah. question. It turns out it's not, weird that. Um, this took me so long, probably about three hours in the end, which is a bit embarrassing. It was about three hours, yeah. It was three hours. Um, a lot of that was, I mean, some of that obviously was me being a complete rookie and having to take it step by step by step and have to ask Matt some of the most basic questions ever. They did help by the end of each little part that I had segmented the video up into. I was quite confident was with where I was at. But, but some of the things were I just, I would measure something and then put it down, mm -hmm. slightly get distracted by something and then think, wait, what was I doing? And then have to re-measure it again and again. I think that's just me being an idiot. Probably, probably. Yeah. What would you say is the best thing that you got from it that you felt would hope uh, would help, help, help someone else. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a very good one. Um, so the one for me huh. would probably be the shooting plane. Yes. That deflection yeah. you were getting. Because it's really common. Uh, one thing that Rob had while he was using the shooting plane was when he was doing so, he was holding it back here, which is all very well. It's kind of what Veritas intended with this particular plane. I was going to say, that's where the handle is. That's so where the handle is. exactly what the thing told me to do. Yes, exactly. But the trouble with this is you're so far away from the actual blade that it's so easy to kind of like push the back in and let the front deflect away. So what I always say is, I mean, with this plane, me and a bunch of other people who own this plane will actually have their hand there. So it's like so much closer to the blade and it's just right up by your hands and you can make sure that the pressure is kind of, you're pushing in a triangle shape with this. Material's going in like that, this plane is going in like that. You don't want to push the material into the plane and deflect it away because even though I've got this fence here, there's a tiny bit of movement in that. So by pushing it in a triangle shape, it all stays in one place. So if we were to move this to a normal plane, let's just get this out, see it's not gonna ride on these very nicely, but when you do so, don't like people try and hold it back there, same problem, it's gonna deflect away. You've got a nice little bit here to put your thumb in. So you put your thumb there, hold it on top of the frog, and then you can push it through like that. So I can understand why it would be an issue on that plane, mm -hmm for having to balance it. But it's like that one's literally designed to be on its side, isn't yep. it? Yep, that is, it's made for this. But it's just one of those things. Like, it's one of those things. Yeah, you can, the reason they make this a swivelly handle is because you can get this at 90 degrees and use it as a flat plane if you want. Okay. But like, I'm probably just gonna take this handle off, I think, and just have it there. Cause yep. that's just comfy. You got that that's nice fair. bit to push your hand against. See, I didn't try it once. I'll give it a go. So, yeah, I see what you mean. It, it looks really uncomfortable, actually. The, um, just everything you've got there actually looks quite bad to be holding. Yeah. But weirdly, it's fairly ergonomic it's for, yeah. for a chunk of metal and a few knobs. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, that was a really good point, actually, with those. As soon as he, as soon as he, as soon as you mentioned about actually putting in a little bit more in force towards the front edge of the plane, 
then the whole thing just ended up working so much better. Mm. The amount of times I, I would hold it up to the light to see if it was square, and thought, what is going wrong? This whole thing is designed to make the thing square and I can't do it. Exactly. But it yeah. turns out there's a little bit more nuance to it than I expected. Yeah, and that, like, that out of squareness that you saw was like the thickness of a hair. It was absolutely nothing, but it is enough to throw things off. Maybe not on this box, but with larger projects, it's worth getting it spot on at that early stage. Um, because yeah, it will just destroy things later on. Yeah, well it's enough to throw off my uh, just ability to keep working under the whole idea that I'm perfect. Hmm. Yeah. Precisely, precisely. Uh, so I think for me, the biggest thing that I learned, apart from that, because that, that was a big one to be fair, was as I've literally done no cutting for the last seven or eight years, mm. I didn't realize quite how much that first initial cut had to be not only in line, as far in line as you can, but done with such confidence to get a clean cut right on that edge and push through and get as many teeth going through it as you can. Yes. So, so it's just like the amount of times that I did it when I would sort of do it weekly and it would shuffle, yeah. or I would do it weekly at an angle and now suddenly that's not worked, or I've done it weekly and it, it's just bounced enough around that you know you've ended up with a big curvy little hole that, yeah. that's no longer fine and defined. So you need to properly commit to it when you do it. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, and, and that made every single one after that so much better. Not that it really mattered, I guess, once this came into play. Mm. Um, but when you're not thinking about using a plane like that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That applies. Good tips there. Good lessons learned, I think. We'll, um, we'll do a summary below this video of things that Rob struggled with, how we fixed it, and yeah, just general pointers for things that weren't covered in the main video, of course. So, yeah. yeah. And don't forget, if you want to share your progress making the same box that I am attempting to do now, you can video it and put it on YouTube, and provided you put in the same links that Matt has within his description, he will share it on his website. Yeah, which will get you a little bit of extra traffic and will just be great for us to watch as well. So, if you want to move on to the next part of the student series, you can do so by clicking the link below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe by pressing the big round button to the left-hand side of the video. See you in the next one. See you later.